Hey guys, in this video, I am going to be talking about a long requested topic, which are, or which is responsive grids. Now, I actually had a look at like, I personally, I'll just let you know, I don't really use responsive grids to begin with. I went ahead and I looked at, and I, I'm just gonna show that here as well. I searched responsive grids on Figma. So I saw a bunch of videos of Misco. I saw some video of design course, and I was just trying to understand like how these people use responsive grids. And I'd just like to say like, again, these are really popular YouTubers. They create a lot of great content, maybe even greater than me. So it's not about like dissing their content, but I personally, as a designer, don't really use responsive grids because I don't find value in them. There is another way in which I structure my websites, my applications to make them responsive, and it's not using responsive grids. But without further ado, let's just set up and structure these responsive grids to begin with. So I'm gonna choose a width, like maybe a 1600 pixel width, off uh, and then I'm going to structure a responsive grid. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to say this is going to be our 1600 pixel frame. Um, then we're going to go here and we're going to set a responsive grid like how some other people actually do it. So they choose a number of columns, usually 12, because that's what Bootstrap, Tailwind, and some other uh, front end development technologies or frameworks actually use. And then they set up a margin. The margin can be whatever it is that you want to set up to make yourself feel good, I guess. And then the gutter can be 16 or it can be 20. But the problem with this particular layout, and I've seen a lot of popular YouTubers use these, this particular layout is when they resize this, they're like, hey, that's awesome. This, this is a responsive grid. As you can see, everything's scaling properly and all of that stuff. But this is, this is really what usually happens in websites and web applications. Like content doesn't just scale completely on the left and the right. Otherwise, it would be really hard to consume. Usually, there are exceptions to the case. There are tons of websites and applications that actually scale their content. But if you're looking at some websites, like if we just look at the example of YouTube, now, as you can see, if I remove the sidebar, this content is always going to be in the middle. If I created this website based on a responsive and a really fluid grid like this, it wouldn't really work because the container would never be in the middle. Usually you have a container in the middle that uh, aggregates or contains all of the content and it usually, after a particular size, it usually remains fixed. Though obviously there are possibilities of increasing it using responsive breakpoints. Similarly, if you go to, let's say LinkedIn, as you can see, I have a really wide screen like, uh, not not really why but 2560 even if i let's say press command minus and minus this is like maybe a 4k or maybe maybe even a or this is like again a really large monitor um if i let let's say press command minus but as you can see the content always remains and it remains in the center so this whole idea that we're going to set up a responsive grid and we're going to set it up set it up like this and then make it make it stretch i don't think that works um and if you, let's say, just keep on stretching it, that's not how you structure websites in my on humble opinion. If, if you go and have a look at, let's say, an example of Apple. So Apple, as you can see, if I scroll down, they have things centered in the middle as well. Even if I remove the sidebar, as you can see, things are centered. And usually they're also not following a 12 pixel or 12 column grid. Uh, I don't think a lot of people actually are following a 12 column grid. I personally follow them when I'm creating, let's say websites uh, using Tailwind or sometimes Bootstrap. But if we actually have a look at, let's say this header, this header isn't the same size as this uh, box that you see at the bottom. Similarly, if I go to the header, this is the header. Um, you can see they have given an explicitly max width to this header. Uh, content, not the whole header, because obviously the background needs to span completely. But there isn't a column structure here. They're not using a column structure on the front end side of things. And I mean, that completely makes sense to me. If we go here, and if you're looking at this particular grid container, this particular thing is obviously using a structure, a column structure. This is the grid template column structure, and they're using it here. And that's perfectly fine as well, because they have cards and they have a particular layout that they want to use here. So again, it may be used, it may not be used, but what usually is being used in most websites and applications and stuff along those lines is a, is a structure of these columns that actually is fixed. So you can either do center and you can give a particular width to the columns, like maybe 80 or something or whatever it is, I don't know. Or a much better thing would be to actually create a container. So I'm gonna name this a container. This is gonna be our container. I'm gonna center it. I'm gonna position it at the top. 
And then I'm going to say I want to apply a layout grid to this container. Uh, and I'm going to say this layout grid is going to be full of columns, 12 columns. Uh, the spacing in between of these columns is going to be 32. And then I can go ahead and I can say this should be centered. Now, let's say if I resize it, either it's like, let's say 1600, let's just make it 1600. Or if I resize this, the container, similar to what I've shown in, on the MacBook website or maybe on the YouTube, website or LinkedIn or whatever it remains in the center so you can actually place your content there much 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 better in a, in a much better way however when it actually comes down to let's say uh, smaller resolutions like for example um, 1280 or something this is where obviously this particular 1440 container breaks down because it again or not 1440 1400 container breaks down because obviously now the screen size is pretty is, is pretty close to the actual container or the the container that you have exactly so what you're going to do in this case is you can if you want just place the container at the edges or you can obviously just remove this container and actually place the style so i'm just going to rename this to 1440 and you can go ahead and then you can create another layout grid and you can say this is going to be full of columns it's going to be 12 columns the margin in between like on the edges can be let's say 48 or 64 or whatever it is that you want uh, this can be a personal decision as well and the spacing in between the gutter between these columns is going to be 32 it can be 24 it can be 20 16 whatever you personally like i usually after let's say 20 pixels or maybe even 16 pixels i like to sit um, sit close to like let's say the 8 pixel spacing so either i'm going to do let's say 16 or i'm going to do 24 or 32 so that's my personal preference so now that we have this particular thing as you can see if i'm resizing it now it's responsive now this is something that we would want but now coming to the fact as to if this is again really so awesome why don't i use this now the way that i've seen a lot of people use this is they'll come here they'll actually structure their header so imagine this is a header they'll structure it like this okay this is a header they're going to say this this is going to be at the center or it can also scale as well and then they're going to go ahead and set up let's say these uh four cards or something so they'll set up the cards like this and then i'm going to set it up like this and then this the, the, the reason why i'm not uh, pressing command d is sometimes these don't land on perfect pixels so i just wanted to do that so now if i actually resize it as you can see now this grid isn't really doing anything i'll just be very honest with you this is just for you to visually see where the elements are going to sit and for you to snap them and all of that stuff but it isn't really doing anything in terms of subs in, in, substantially to the content now if i let's say wanted to have let's say uh, two cards at the bottom i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna let's say scale them just let's scale them to something like this and then obviously i can go ahead and i can arrange them accordingly now these are again two cards um, that are sitting in six by six columns so you can do all of that stuff with these columns obviously if this was something like this you can also apply the same thing the same logic to I'm just going to copy all of these things and I'm going to place them here. Uh, I'm going to go up. So imagine this is the header content. So it's going to be like this. And then we have the four cards. Again, they're going to occupy the three columns and like this. And to me personally, like this is a lot of work. Like I personally don't know how people actually go ahead and structure things like this. Like this not only is uh, prone to tons of errors in my opinion it isn't even pleasing to actually work with something like this so if i i can if i want to let's say resize this accordingly i can just do scale 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 on all of these things and now if i let's say scale it as you can see scale it so it's scaling not really properly because obviously it's spreading on the left and the right so you don't want to do scale as you would perhaps think you would actually do left and then you would do right so once you've done that, sorry, left and the right, both. So once you've done that, now if you scale it, it's gonna preserve its position from the left and the right. So now, as you can see, this is perfectly balanced on that particular scale. But personally to me, like who gives a crap? Like who gives a crap about these things? This is just so hard to do. If I wanted to do something like this, I would get rid of this responsive layout to begin with. This is gonna be my container. I am gonna go ahead and make this an auto layout. Screw everything. I'm gonna make this an auto layout, just gonna expand it to a particular fixed width if I want, or I can obviously 
I give it a certain width and I can just start giving or adding elements inside of it. So now this is an auto layout. It's going to span up um, top to the bottom. Now I am going to have these four cards. I want to see, I want to have them side by side. The spacing in between them is going to be 32. That is it. That's how you structure a basic grid layout. I can give a particular spacing in between this, between these like vertically. Uh, and then if I want to have, let's say a two column layout, something like this I can so again one mistake that I've done is I need to select all of these elements I'm gonna select them by going to the container pressing enter and then saying fill container then I'm gonna press enter again to select all of the children within this within these containers and I'm gonna say fill container now that I've done that I can basically just go ahead this is like our four columns or four cards I want to have two cards no worries let's just remove both of these so again these are two cards i just want to have one card i'm going to duplicate it i'm going to remove one one of the cards and that's going to scale appropriately i want to have 12 cards that's that's perfectly fine as well one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and that's going to sit on that particular thing now whether this particular thing was visible or not sorry this this layout grid was visible or not doesn't really matter because this is always going to sit on that particular grid that i've decided for myself using this auto layout and the good thing about this auto layout i don't need to again position all of these things differently here i can just remove this i can go ahead and remove all of these crappy things uh and this was whole crappy responsive uh whatever that was and I can just resize it I can just resize the same thing accordingly I can say okay on the left and the right I need a particular padding I need a 32 pixel padding or a 48 pixel padding and that's just going to resize my content because everything now is being structured into an auto layout I don't necessarily have to set up a responsive grid and then place my elements and then con uh, configure the positioning and then constraints and all of that stuff i don't like to do that i think it's a waste of time and i wouldn't recommend you doing that as well so again if you now want to let's say change the uh spacing in between or the gutters in between of these elements that's going to be a personal decision to you even if you updated those gutters manually that's not going to update your design so why even think about adding one step of updating your gutters on the responsive grid if you want to update them just select all of these let's say and just say that spacing in between them is going to be 24 and that's it as you can see the previous list was 32 and now it's 24 that's done now you want to set up a mobile screen size or something you can do that too so i'm going to say that this particular size is going to be and I don't even know why I actually have this container. I can remove this container and give this container itself the background. So now if I want to say I want to have a size of, let's say, I don't know, 960 pixels. And that's going to be, that's not going to have 12 columns. It's just going to have four columns. So I'm going to do that. Now, as you can see, obviously in the four columns, both of these work, but this doesn't work. This should be distributed into four columns as well. So now if I've done that, these are 12 and if these are 12 these should again now span horizontally so four 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 now these are the 12 columns that you previously had which you construct responsively if you're following auto layout and if you're doing things correctly it's just going to be such an ease to actually make these responsive layouts it's just going to be such a breeze uh, so those are some of the reasons why i don't use responsive layouts to begin with sometimes obviously it's not really advisable even to use responsive layouts a lot of people sometimes use these responsive grids these columns column structures when they're creating websites however there are going to be elements that don't actually sit on these things sometimes and let's say and here's an example of a website that my own designer on my team actually designed now as you can see this is actually sitting on a let me just open this so you can see the whole website how it's structured now as you can see this is sitting somewhat on a responsive grid but since this is slightly indented like the the way that it's structured is slightly different as you can see this there's a border coming around there are homes here there's like what we do here and so obviously there is going to be some discrepancy as to how this is actually being implemented in the responsive layout now if we go here the content is actually being placed uh on the edges of the of the column which technically isn't really right so if i had to let's say correct this i would go ahead and again this is like a rough design so I obviously see a lot of fancy stuff here it's not uh, particularly organized in an auto layout but this was just a dribble chart this wasn't an actual project that we did so if we had to do something like that we would have to place it here and now if i go to this design 
I personally don't like the spacing that's here now. Like I previously think that the spacing we, that we had previously was much better in this case. Similarly, if I go here, as you can see, this isn't really sitting in a particular position as well on the grid. If I have to do something like this, I can do it. But now if we go and just have a look at this, I think these two, two things are sitting way close to one another. I can go ahead and I can move them. I can say that it's gonna sit here, but now I think it's very far. I don't really want these as far. I probably want it somewhere here, maybe at a 64 pixel distance, but I wouldn't be able to do that if I was strictly following this column layout to a T. So again, those are just some of the reasons why I personally don't really recommend using the responsive grid. Uh, I don't really find a lot of value in it. So obviously if you find value in it, if any educator on YouTube is saying that you should use these in a particular manner and you are finding value in it, then obviously they probably know a lot better than me. But this is how I particularly use um, to structure my, res how I particularly use auto layout basically to structure my content, to structure things responsively and all of that jazz. So that's pretty much it for this video. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon. Let me know if I've missed anything. There's a secret thing in responsive grids uh, or responsive column grids that you find really useful. A lot of people actually also have the spacing uh, defined in between as a grid as well uh, or as a layout grid as well. And I'm like, why do you wanna do that if you actually have an auto layout here and the auto layout itself is dictating what the spacing is gonna be? I mean, obviously for consistency's uh, sake, I can see that you have a grid obviously defined and then everyone's using that grid to follow it and all of that stuff. But I feel like there may be exceptions sometime and then it actually takes away from the creativity and flexibility. That's just my personal opinion. So that's gonna be pretty much it. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.